scary games are something we all grew up on. Outlast, Doom, and especially Five Nights at Freddy's. But what if I told you these games had an extremely disturbing birth? Today we're going to be covering horror games based on true events. What's going on everybody, my name is Chris and welcome back to Scarier Than You Think. Today we're going to be covering, as I said, horror games based on true events. Some of them are directly based and others are loosely, or we're going to be covering more or less some horror games that actually have a true disturbing backstory that has happened in real life. If that sounds good to you, sit back, relax, and let's jump right into the video. Five Nights at Freddy's Five Nights at Freddy's is a survival point-and-click horror game, taking place in a pizzeria known as Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. In most of the games, the player assumes the role of the nighttime employee, who utilizes his tools such as security cameras, lights, doors, and vents to defend himself against the hostile animatronic characters that inhabit the location. I want to venture to say most of us have at least played one Five Nights at Freddy's game, but the game itself is actually loosely based off a real crime that took place in a Chuck E. Cheese in 1983. One night in 1983, a 19-year-old man hid inside of the Chuck E. Cheese bathroom Room, while five workers had to stay late cleaning up. The manager was in her office while one of the other teenagers was in the kitchen. The other three teenagers were cleaning the tables after the parties. And the 19-year-old left the bathroom shooting the three teenagers who were cleaning the tables to death. He then moved on to the kitchen where he shot the person who was cleaning the kitchen in the face. He then forced the manager to open the safe, then unalived her as well. The 19-year-old actually used to work there, meaning he knew all of the employees that he just slaughtered. The reason he did this? Well, he was fired after a disagreement with a customer. He was then caught and sentenced to death, but his sentencing currently has been postponed. There's a theory online posting that Foxy, Freddy, Chica, Bonnie, and Golden Freddy represent each lost life. This is just absolutely horrible. Granny. Granny is a 2017 indie survival horror game. The game features an unnamed protagonist trapped in a house, needing to solve puzzles and avoiding the granny antagonist to get out of the house in a period within five to six days. The game is loosely based off of the Granny Ripper, aka Tamara Sampson. Tamara kept her grandson in captivity, and every time he would make any bit of noise, she would come down to the cellar where she had him locked up and beat him with a baseball bat. But unfortunately, by the fifth day, she had enough and she decided to kill him. Tamara Sampson killed over 11 people, including her husband and, of course, her grandson. The reason she was caught, well, she was actually caught on camera in her apartment building carrying shopping bags full of their body parts. And yes, of course, she was also a cannibal. So any parts and pieces that she didn't try and throw away, well, she was also eating them, making it a double whammy. It's not clear cut whether or not this game is actually based off of her, but let's just say the game itself, the time timeline and the way the granny kills people in the game don't seem to be much of a coincidence. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Atari 2006. The game more or less is inspired by Ed Gein, a serial killer who not only unalived people and ate them, but also would use his female victim's skin for furniture. As I said before, he was also a cannibal, meaning that he was eating most of these people as well and just using their skin, which is just absolutely disgusting. The game is based off of the movies, which is there then based off of Ed Gein, so there really isn't much about it, but I figured I had to add it into this list. Mr. Meat. Mr. Meat is an escape room horror indie game. In the description of the game reads, Zombie Plague has arrived in your neighborhood. Your neighbor, the Butcher, is a zombie hungry for blood. He has no soul and only wants to kill and to have fresh blood and meat to eat. He has become a serial killer and his house is a mix between a haunted house and a prison. The creepy zombie known as Mr. Meat is a serious criminal case. The game is loosely based on Joe Metheny, who was an actual serial killer and, once again, a cannibal. I don't know what's up with all of these cannibals in this list why we're making games after these people, but it's quite Quite odd, but he did unalive upward of 30 people, making them into burgers and selling them at his food stand. Meaning that he wasn't only a cannibal, but he was selling real human flesh to people and more or less making and forcing them to eat actual people. And also, as you can see, the cover for the game and the resemblance to Joe Metheny is way too eerily similar. Chernobylite. Chernobylite is a sci-fi survival horror game where the player makes their way across the Chernobyl explosion zone. The reactor itself exploded in the mid-80s, causing a horrendous sequence of events, costing many lives and ruining the area forever. Chernobylite is located in a very exclusive zone, which covers 30 kilometers in every direction around the Chernobyl nuclear reactor site. The player must search the dangerous area for their long-lost wife, the haunting and melancholy feel it provides to look into the true brutality of this unfortunate event. Chernobylite heavily plays into the aftermath of the nuclear reactor explosion. As I said before, you more or less play in a 3D world of what exactly it looks like after the explosion at the nuclear reactor. Outlast 2. Outlast 2 is a 2017 first-person psychological horror survival game. The game features a journalist named Blake Langerman, along with his wife Lynn, roaming the Arizona desert to explore the murder of a pregnant woman known as Jane Doe. Both are unfortunately separated in a helicopter crash, and Blake has to find his wife while traveling through a village inhabited by a deranged sect that believes the end of days is upon us. The game is loosely based on the Jonestown Massacre. The story of Jonestown begins with Jones, a white minister who preached unconventional socialism and progressive ideas to a 
predominantly African-American congregation called the People's Temple. At the height of its popularity in the 1970s, the temple had a membership estimated in the thousands and was courted by politicians in San Francisco, including Harvey Milk. But by 1977, Jones had grown paranoid from the media's scrutiny over the temple's suspicious activity, so he and his numerous followers moved to an agricultural settlement, aka Jonestown, in Guyana, a remote country east of Venezuela. Concern over the welfare of those in the jungle encampment promoted U.S. Congressman Leo Ryan to visit Jonestown. After checking out the settlement, Ryan was shot to death along with four people by the temple's gunmen at the airstrip. Following those murders, Jones commanded his followers to drink cyanide-laced punch, starting with the children first. There were over 900 people who died in Jonestown that day, including Jim Jones himself, who was found with a gunshot wound in his head. There is speculation that he may have took his own life, or that his nurse Annie Moore shot him before then shooting herself. Before September 11th, this was known as the largest American civilian casualties in a single non-natural event. The co-founder of Red Barrel Games, Philip Moore, and the people behind Outlast 2 had an interview with Indie Games Level Up, in which he discussed the inspiration for this game. Moore stated in the interview that a lot of the inspiration for Outlast 2 was doing a lot of research in the Jonestown Massacre. And of course, the Jonestown Massacre was the largest mass ever. That's actually going to do it for me today, guys. Hopefully you did go and enjoy today's video. And if you did, don't forget to smack a like and a that'd be greatly appreciated. Comment down below your thoughts down below. I'll have all of my links down below as well, where I got my inspiration for this video and more or less where I got all of my information. With all of that being said, my name is Chris. And of course, I will catch you guys on the next one.